My name is Stephen Patterson. I head up public uh, policy for R. I guess everybody here knows about R, but just in case uh, anyone who doesn't, uh, ARM, uh, we design microprocessors. We are uh, one of the central best kept high tech secrets in the UK. We are in over 95% of mobile phones and a whole lot of other stuff, uh, other mobile tablets, uh, but also digital televisions, cameras, set top boxes, and so on and so on. And so on. Uh, the second point I want to make about ARM is, is about our business model. Um, because we don't make anything, our essential transaction is selling a license to chip manufacturers to make chips on the basis of our designs. But that wouldn't work unless we could also bring together a very large ecosystem of other companies, uh, OEM, software people, graphic designers, all sorts of people. So we now operate with about 1,000 companies in our ecosystem. We believe that this model enshrines competition and stimulates innovation. Uh, and it's something which uh, has worked very well for us uh, and we believe is a very good model for the future development of this sector, particularly when it comes to Internet of Things. Internet of Things, uh, I'm not going to share the numbers that other people have, uh, uh, or repeat the numbers that other people have shared with you, but we certainly believe that Internet of Things has a huge future. Now, it's easy to say that, and then, of course, nobody quite knows either what Internet of Things really is, or, you know, why it hasn't happened so far. People have been talking about it for, for some time, uh, and still nothing's happened. So, you know, what is this? Is, it, is this just an article of faith, or is it something where we can see real drivers moving ahead? Um, we like to be a bit visionary, uh, and we like to have visions of Internet of Things, and we like to think that that is a realizable vision driven by a number of different factors. And one of the factors which I'll, I'll put before you today is actually, um, you know, the Life in the future will not be the same as it is today. The world will not be the same as it is today. Actually, we will be responding to huge pressures, environmental pressures, energy pressures, uh, pressures uh, um, looking after uh, um, the health of an increasingly aging population. Those things, I put to you, will all help drive Internet of Things uh, once it gets going. Because the Internet of Things is able to address some of those questions. It's able to provide a whole range of things, of course, that are exciting for consumers as well, uh, and householders and all the rest of it, but it's also able to help us address some of those fundamental questions that will affect the um, future on this planet. And that, it may sound idealistic and visionary, but it's certainly something worth, uh, worth keeping in mind. What is Internet of Things? I mean, for us, Internet of Things is the ability of an object, essentially, to sense what's happening around it and to transmit that data somewhere else. Uh, almost certainly to the cloud, eventually to someone's mobile phone or to a remote doctor or whatever. Uh, and the someone else is able to make a decision on the basis of it. Sometimes objects may be able to talk directly to each other so that you can run smart motors with a, with a monitoring unit that actually helps the motor run more efficiently and use electricity more efficiently. Ditto if you get a really smart meter eventually installed in your house. That may be able to do all sorts of things uh, remotely for you by talking to machines without your necessarily your intervention. So that's what Internet of Things is really about. It's really about collecting data, transmitting it to someone, at some, to someone or somewhere else, so that that data can enable decisions to be taken to run individual lives and the life of the community more efficiently and, and effectively. There are things that have, of course, held it back. Now, we don't know, I mean, as David was saying, we don't really know where we are right now in the trajectory of the development of Internet of Things. Um, you know, some might say it's a bit like the mobile phone. I mean, the technology for mobile phones was around by the late 1990s, certainly maybe a bit mid-1990s, but actually, if, if we were to, to, to conduct a straw poll on you know, when did the mobile phone really take off, my guess is we've come out somewhere around 2003 or 2004. Um, so having the technology in place isn't the only driver of these things, but it's certainly an essential precondition. What drives these things? Well, David was saying, you know, it's very difficult to tell. I mean, what drove 
the take-up of mobile phone, were a number of things that came together at the, at the same time, including the liberalisation of, um, of telecommunication services. I'll have more to say about that I mentioned in a minute. But, uh, so we can't say for sure exactly where we are on this trajectory. Uh, it will certainly, the progress will certainly be held by everyone, as David said, in a sort of crowdsourcing effort, um, exploring avenues and trying to, to find solutions to the existing technical and public policy problems. Technical problems, um, connectivity is one. I mean, if you're going to have Internet of Things, essentially what you need is a lot of microsensors that can operate reliably and effectively for a long time at low cost. Uh, that is what uh, ARM, in a sense, is all about. I mean, our drive to improve our products is a drive always to improve their energy efficiency and indeed, in, in one channel of our activities, to uh, go for greater miniaturization. So we are quite close, I think, to being able to provide the kinds of microsensors that could deliver the sort of service um, which, which I've described. Um, the second part of the technology, though, is all about standards, about interoperability. That is trickier. Uh, you know, I'm reminded, in the sense, of, of the history of the national grid, where, as far as I understand it, in the 1920s in the UK, someone around and said, there's all these different sockets here, there's all this different kind of plugs, there's all this different uh, electricity uh, available. This is silly. Why don't we standardise it? And so the national grid was created. Now, generally speaking, Standards emerge in a much more mysterious way than that. Uh, they certainly have uh, in, in recent years. And we don't know for sure quite how the key standards will emerge uh, for Internet of Things. We as ARM are working with, with Newell and others in looking, for example, at white space, uh, which we think has huge advantages, um, low cost, uh, universally recognized, uh, available um, spectrum uh, which might drive this and we, we are working hard with the, um, the consortium, the weightless consortium in trying to see whether we can create a kind of critical mass around standards uh, in the white space area which we think will, will drive this forward uh, quite effectively. With luck, that, that is what will happen. But standards are, uh, in, for the best one in the world, a bit of a mystery in this area. Um, but people are working on it, and when the, the, the traps open, then I suspect everybody will be off out of it and into the race. But the, the second thing I wanted to mention, and this is the last point I'm going to make, because it's not often mentioned in, in discussions like this, is the role of public policy. Uh, and it's worth thinking about. I mean, we, we are just sort of scratching the surface of this a little bit. But it, it, it is worth thinking about. It's worth thinking about, come back to the mobile phone, thing, the liberalisation of telecommunications, I would argue, uh, was one of the factors that helped spark the mobile phone uh, revolution. And that it's easy for us all to say, oh, the best thing government can do is to stay out of all of these things. Well, actually, first of all, government can sometimes wade into them and do more harm than good. Uh, but secondly, uh, there may be ways in which government and regulation can stimulate the take up of some of these things. The timing needs to be done carefully, you need to make sure the market's not doing it. But um, that's an area of, of, of public policy and internet of things that, that we're beginning to look at uh, quite, quite carefully. Um, the other thing uh, which I wanted to mention is that if this is going to take off, it's obviously going to be good. So if you're looking at uh, standards, if you're looking at regulation, uh, you have to think outside the UK, outside the European <coughs> Union, and think globally. I want to make a comment finally on, on some of the issues that have been raised about, in a sense, the business model for this, because this is also, I think, interesting. You know, where is the money going to come from to drive the sort of Internet of Things which I've just spoken about? Um, and, and I've put before you two possible suggestions. Uh, the insurance sector, and data, data processing and data analytics. Um, if, for example, one aspect of Internet of Things is going to be that you get a message to your mobile phone if you leave your front door unlocked, one of the ways of, of trying to advance all of that will be through insurance arrangements, and it's already happened uh, elsewhere. Data analytics is, is trickier, because Internet of Things will allow the accumulation of, of granularity of data on, on uh, an unprecedented scale. 
Uh, and we still don't know quite what that will entail. Um, but the chances are it will hold our opportunities for analysis, use of that data in, in ways we can, we can hardly dream of right now. That's tricky, and it comes back to the public policy bit, because actually people are rightly very sensitive about their data. Uh, the general principle has always been that consumers own their data and that stuff shouldn't be done with it, even in some cases if it's anonymized um, without consumers' consent. And if I had to bet, I think that that whole data and data privacy issue will be something that will come under scrutiny as the Internet of Things takes off. Um, partly because we will obviously need everybody to trust the system if it's going to work, and partly, as I said, because the use of the data may turn out to be one of those kickstarts that help <coughs> uh, finance the model. So I think I'm doing five minutes. Maybe I'll That's, that's great. Thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs>